All right. Remind me of your name. I know Mark. Tom. Uh, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Okay, Tom. All right. So Tom and Mark, have either of you closed a real estate transaction yet? Okay. Okay. Um, the few that you have working, are they contractual with you? Either you have a listing agreement or a buyer's rep agreement? Yes, two. Two of them. Okay. And what was the source of those two? Floor duty. Both of them. All right. Mark, what about you? Do you have are you working with anybody actively right now? Okay. All right. Well, you guys are in just the right place. Just the right place in your career. That's why we're here. We're trying to find somebody to work with. Yeah, to be in this class. Oh my goodness gracious. So so here's the deal. I had an epiphany recently. I'm par I put together a little mastermind group of top broker owners around the state, one from every major market, who is also uh, selling real estate. Um, and I would say the minimum production in the group of five was probably 20 million a year. So these are these are heavy hitters, um, who are also running you know Remax real estate offices, and. Um, in preparation for our first mastermind retreat, I asked everybody to look at their transactions over the previous 12 months and source their business. Where did it come from? So in this case, Tom, you have two from Floor. 100% of your business from Floor, right? So don't miss those slots. <laughs> you want to be there for sure. Um, but what I discovered when I went through that little exercise myself <laughs> I'm going to try to get this on the camera, is that 75% um, of the transactions that I have closed since I, I had the opportunity to begin selling last July all came from one source. And that was very interesting to me because I have been exploring multiple sources. Just basically everything that I teach in class, I I practice at it so that I can teach with a little bit more integrity and some real world experience. And I've done the Craigslist thing, um, Lead Street landing pages, uh, FISBOs, expireds, open house, um, all, all the basic sources. But seven, I was shocked to see that 75% came from one source. By the way, you want to guess what that source was? It, it, it would be my network, which includes referrals. That's exactly right, um, which was very interesting to me because I've only lived in Houston for three and a half years. I moved here in January of two, 2010, began work here, didn't actually move here till the summer. And then last summer, when I entered this new role and began to sell a little real estate, I moved to Tomball. Everybody I knew was in Katy. So basically, starting from scratch. Um, and yet still 75% have come from network. So that caused me, doing that little analysis, um, caused me to, to reorient my entire business plan um, and really focus on developing that. I, I am so convinced of the value of your network. Here's my, here's my uh, statement of the day. You can take this to the bank. Your first hundred thousand dollars should come from your network. Okay, your first hundred thousand. Um, I I think network, and this wasn't an epiphany. I have known this and taught this for years. Your network is the foundation of an abundant sales career. I mean, we're talking about people who already know you, like you, trust you, whether they know you from another industry, whether they're related to you, whether they're a neighbor, whether you go to church together. These are people where you don't have to break the ice. And if, if they um, really believe two things about you, one, that you care, and two, that you're competent, okay, you're not going to mess the deal up you're going to be able to perform as expected, then they are going to do business with you. So it's just so much easier doing business like that than starting from scratch with people who have no prior relationship with you. And specifically today, what I want to do is talk about how to extract two transactions a month from your network. Okay, again, average sale price in this market area, $200,000. Are we, we safe there? 
That's a $6,000 commission. Who can multiply 24 times 6 in their head? Well, it's a little... 136? 136,000. There's your first 100 right there, right? Your first 100 from your network right there. And of course, as we know, there's four other prospecting sources. There's five marketing sources, multiple subcategories. So you don't have to limit yourself to 136,000. But why not pick up the easy money right there? This is the low-hanging fruit. So work with me um, as, we, as we scroll through these slides. And I see you've all figured out the format. It's a flip-up vertical format with lots of room to write notes. And I want to encourage you to do that um, as we work through this material. So first of all, let's define our terms. Your network, in my definition, right, there's, everybody has their own way. This is my way. Your network has two groups of people in it. Those who already know you, like you, trust you. And another way to say that, and I have this conversation with new agents all the time, if you were to sit down with a blank pad of paper and write down the first names of everybody you know, everybody you know on a first name basis, that's your initial friends and family network. Okay? By the way, if you were to do that, how many people would be on your list? Every person you know right now on a first name basis from every sphere of life who lives within your market area. How many? Anybody? Twenty-five? Fifty? Couple hundred. Couple hundred. Oh, you're going to love this class. Couple hundred will get you there. Okay? It'll get you to your first hundred. Okay? I, I think a hundred is a good number. A hundred. If you think about all the different spheres that you interact with, spheres of people, you could probably come up with a hundred. Um, and if you can't, I'm going to give you some... Um, counsel today on how to get there. But I include a second group of people in network, and this may be a little bit more controversial, but it's, again, it's, it's my class, <laughs> so it's my definition. And that is those who respond to your prospecting and marketing efforts, uh, indicating they have a need to buy, sell, lease, or invest. Okay, so, so, so Mark, that's not all thousand people that you downloaded from your farm area, okay? However, if you begin geo-farming them, or even demographic farming them, and one of them hits on your website or calls you indicating a need to do one of these four things that triggers a real estate transaction, then I would shift that person into my network, okay? That's because they have now put themselves in the category of highly likely to do business with you. Highly likely. All right. Additionally, <clears throat> to go in your network, to qualify for your network, they must live in your market area or be in a position to refer people in your market area. Okay? So your cousin Joe, who thinks the world of you, who lives in Seattle, does not qualify to be in your network, okay? I'm not saying don't send a birthday card or go see him at Christmas, but for business purposes, uh, now, if you had a realtor friend, a realtor friend in Seattle who was regularly sending Boeing employees to Houston, that person would qualify to be in your network. And that's just a friendly reminder that we all need to turn our phones off. Wasn't that fancy? Y'all wake up. Come on now. Yeah, that was your phone, not mine. Come on. All right. Let's have fun with this. All right. Secondly, you must have their complete contact information. And I cannot stress that enough. In fact, I put it in big capital letters. Nobody should be considered in your network until you have their complete contact information. Email, address, and phone. Okay? Email address, phone. Now you can go beyond that. You can get birthdays, anniversary, dog name, favorite ice cream, all that kind of stuff is fabulous. But at a minimum, name, address, email, and phone number. Because you're going to reach out to them in all those ways. And I'm going to share with you before we're done, if you don't have that, a way to generate immediate business. This week business. Gathering that information. Okay? 
How y'all feel about this so far? You agree with me so far? And feel free to disagree. I'm good with that too. All right, core beliefs. These are my core beliefs, but I'm, I'm uh, happy to defend them. Okay? Your network is the foundation of an abundant sales career. You're more likely to do business with people who already know you, like you, trust you, or have responded positively to your prospecting and marketing efforts. Okay? The low-hanging fruit. The people most likely to do business with you. Two, investments in your network yield the highest ROI, return of investment, of any prospecting or marketing source <clears throat> because the recipients are already predisposed to do business with you or have indicated they have a need for your services. Okay? So, so for example, in geofarming, which I'm a huge fan of, I'm a huge believer in it, you may be mailing to 500 homes every month. Okay? Do you know in advance that all 500 have a definite need for real estate advice? They're contemplating a real estate transaction. You, you don't know that. You're playing the odds, right? I mean, you know it's likely that one out of seven are going to move this year. And so you mail to all 500, you know, hoping to catch the 15% on the right day. And they decide to call you. Well, within this group, this is, all these are 15 percenters. These are all one out of sevens in the sense that they've indicated, oh, I have a need. Okay, so now you're fishing in a stocked pond. These are people who say they need the help you provide. Or, because of prior relationship, when they do have a need, you're not in competition. Right? That business goes to you because you've demonstrated that you care and that you're competent. Okay? And then finally, a core belief, the vast majority of agents, even highly successful agents, neglect this source of business. And I'll just give you one example. I could give you thousands, okay? I was talking to an agent in that other office um, recently who um, his first year in real estate made Platinum Club, okay? So $250,000 in gross commissions. And that was about six or seven years ago. And he did that because of a relationship he had with a builder. Okay? He got an inside track to a massive amount of new home listings that, that drove his sales and, and commissions up. But since then, he has maintained. He's, he's built a, a, a pretty good business. He's a, he is a, an aggressive lead generator knows how to generate lots of business through the front door. So I sat down with him for a consultation and asked him about his database. That's always my first question. Tell me about your database. He does not have one. He did not have any electronic file of any person that he has ever done a transaction with. And now, over six or seven years, that, that would amount to hundreds of people at his level of production. Now he's got some paper files in the file cabinets, right? Um, or he can go on to Backagent, which is the electronic document storage system in the Woodlands, and start extracting that information. But he hired a full-time assistant who worked on that for weeks and weeks and finally quit. Okay? Massive undertaking. Um, and I want to say that that might be an outlier in terms of an extreme example, but at the same time, neglect of database is very typical. Very typical. Because, and it's probably this short-term mindset. We get involved in a transaction, we get the deal closed, and we move on to the next, forgetting that this person, if they had a good experience with us, will use us again if we stay in touch with them. Okay? So we have to elevate the priority of our network. Okay? Put yourself here not in typical, um, but in unique. All right. So I said this is how you get to 24 transactions a year from your network alone to a minimum of two transactions a month and I want you to see the math behind that before we get into the actual strategy. According to NAR stats, 15 percent of the American population moves every year. That's one out of seven. Is that true by your experience or observation? I bust the curve on that, okay? My wife and I have been married 24 years. We've moved 21 times. <laughs> that's sick, isn't it? That's a sickness. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, that's the national average. Every person knows five people who will move this year. 
okay, on a, on a first name basis. Five people in your sphere are going to move. So for every 100 people in your network, 15 will have a need to buy or sell this year, or both. If it's I thought that was my phone. Okay, both sides. If it's local, that's 30 transactions. Now, for every 100 people in your network, if they know five who are going to move, that's 500 other people or 1,000 potential transactions that are known by your top 100 people. Okay? So let's just say that even in your network, okay, these people who are committed to you, if friends and family, or as a result of your prospecting efforts, they have responded to you. Let's say you only capture 20% of that business. I mean, is that, is that reasonable? You know, if Cousin Harry is buying and selling in Kingwood, is it likely he's going to use you? Okay? If you're farming a geographic area and somebody says, hey, I'd like that market evaluation on my home because we're thinking about selling in three months, could you get one out of five <laughs> of those kind of people? Somebody say, yes, yes, I can do that. You can do that. Okay? So, if you grow your network to 200 people, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in fairly short order, if you're not there already, Thomas is, and you capture just 20% of the 60 transactions they're involved in, that's 12, de 12 deals right there. That's one a month. One a month. And then if you just get an equal number from the 2,000 transactions that those people know, you're at 24. Right there, you're at well over $100,000. I think we calculated $136,000 right there. And you can be at 200 people in your network in fairly short order. By the way, if we defined network as somebody that you have complete contact information on, that's in a, a customer relationship manager software, it's in a database, a usable database, what's your number right now? How many do you have right now in your database with complete contact information? Anybody want to volunteer a number? That's kind of scary, isn't it? Well, when was the last time I looked at the database? It's been a long time. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me say, the average of agents I talk to is about 35. Again, most agents are neglecting this source of business, the easiest source of business. Okay, But I'm going to say, let's get you to 200 quickly. 200 people quickly, and that'll get you your 24 transactions okay, using this strategy. Okay, step one. Here we go, down in the weeds. Consolidate your database. Choose a CRM platform. Again, most agents have got some data in Outlook, on Yahoo, on their Gmail account, uh, in the file cabinet, right, or on the server in the office, or on note cards, or in the little black book in the kitchen drawer. Okay? We have stuff everywhere. I'm going to say choose one. Choose a system. Choose a place. And, and there are really no bad decisions as long as you choose one. I don't care if you use Outlook. I don't care if you use Gmail. Okay? Very simple, accessible platforms to manage your database. Um, although I do have a recommendation. And my recommendation is Lead Street. Okay? It's a pretty good CRM. It has additional spin-off benefits to using it as your CRM. For one thing, it will link directly with your Design Center account. So if you want to start sending out some electronic postcards or you want to start using some drip campaigns, and I, I really don't recommend drip campaigns as a, as a rule of thumb, but in Lead Street, you can write custom campaigns. You can write your own stuff, and it will easily send out to everybody in your database, and there's, there's no charge uh, to send mass emails through Lead Street. Okay? That's not true with every CRM. So I think there's some real value in choosing that, but just choose one. Secondly, under step one, gather lists of everybody that you know or are in association with right now. 
And I've just given you a list here, PTA, Church, Boy Scouts, Chamber of Commerce, Neighborhood Association, past clients and customers. Somebody tell us a group or organization that you're affiliated with right now that's not on that list. Homeschool Excellent. Homeschool. Somebody else. What group of people do you have access to? Uh, sports. Sports teams? Children's sports teams. Fabulous. Fabulous source. Think about what you do, where you go, who you hang out with, who you are affiliated with right now. Could be an alumni association, right? Absolutely. Okay. Former, former co-workers. How many of y'all are part of an HOA? Your home, you probably live in an area governed by an HOA. Do you have access to their database? Well, you need to get elected to the board. <laughs> hey, I'm walking the talk. I'm being put up for our board this week. Okay. Um, I want the data. Okay. I've already volunteered for neighborhood neighborhood watch. There's another one. Okay. Mud directors. Mud directors. All those things. All, so what you're going to do is go through each of these affiliations that you have and gather contact data from them and put them in your one CRM. Okay? By the way, if you just did this, would it get you to 200? Oh, oh I would think so. I would think so right there. Okay? And I'm not saying just wholesale import the list. I'll give you an example. I'm doing this right now with my church because we're in a new church because we moved last summer, that whole deal. I don't know all 400 people, right? But I am going through the directory and I'm cherry picking those that are in my Sunday school class or come to our small group that I, that I have some first name knowledge of, okay? Because then I'm not abusing the relationship that we have in church membership, this is a friend. This is a person who's become a friend. Okay, first name basis. All right. Put them into your database indicating the source of the relationship. Every CRM has customizable fields where you can put in there Boy Scouts, uh, HOA, Church, Chamber of Commerce, whatever it is. Just in one of those fields indicate the source of the relationship. Okay. If you do nothing else in your business this week, but what's on this page right here, it will be a week well spent. In fact, if you haven't done this already, I would go so far as to say you should stop what you're doing and get this done. Okay, because this is the foundation of an abundant sales career. Get your database together. Okay? Any questions about that? Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Um yeah, I had something on my mind that contacting database people you know, there's a lot of people that when you're a new agent, you could come across as a little overpowered. Hey, I'm in business, now. you want to, my mind's going in what direction that says, hey, if I know X amount of people and they're, uh, hey, Tom's, you know, kind of getting real estate and they're in apartments. Right. I don't know, it's been on my mind to be able to say, okay, be able to create some kind of meeting um, where it's non-threatening, it's just putting it out there, because they'll, they'll ask the questions. They'll yeah. come say, hey, yeah, you know what, I'll meet you over there or have some kind of presentation. Right. No, I, I, I love that idea. I, I, I think meetings, are, again, are very underutilized. Buyer seminars, first time home, all those things are fantastic. But I'm going to ask you two questions. Do you care about the people that you want to do business with? Yeah, I do. Are you competent to help them? Getting there. Okay. When you're there, okay, and by that I mean, I'm going to challenge you just a little bit on that. How many of those people that you want to help have been to real estate license school? How many of them have invested 168 hours in advanced education like you have and then passed the test? Nobody. Okay. Are you in a position to help them? Yeah, 
uh, yes, I am between myself, the school, everything I have, and the support system that I have? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, there you go. So you answered that originally thinking, but I'm not where I want to be. That's okay. You just have to be a step ahead of the people you're helping, right? right? And know how to get additional assistance. So here, here's, the, here's the point. If you care and you're competent, then you should be extremely confident in reaching out to them, even on an individual basis. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a specific strategy for that, but I'm gonna encourage you to call or speak with personally every single person in your network immediately. And with that specific message, hey, did you know that I have switched careers and I'm now a full-time real estate professional? I'd be happy to help you or your family or anybody you know if you have a need to buy, sell, lease, or invest. Okay? You've got to get that message out there. I hired an agent a few weeks ago in the Woodlands who's transitioning out of a position in law enforcement. He called me yesterday. He said, Frank, I got my first listing appointment. I said, how did that happen? I always ask about source of business. Okay? He said, I put a little Remax sticker on my car. One of my coworkers saw it and asked me about it. And he said, perfect timing, I need to sell my house. Okay? Don't be shy. Get the word out there, be loud and proud. All right. Step two. Now that we have everybody in the database, we're going to start tweaking it. Okay? And I'm going to recommend that you categorize it. And I'm going to share with you just what I do personally. And I, I suspect some of y'all can come up with a better plan, but this, this works for me. First of all, I do friends and family. Okay? And if they're a past client or customer, they're in that category now. Okay? That's part of my marketing pitch. You know, if you're a client of mine, you're going to become a friend of mine. And, that, and that's been my experience, okay? We're going we're gonna to get to know each other. We're going to stay in touch after the transaction. We're going to go to dinner. I'm going to be coming by your... I got a call from one of my clients last month. I'm driving down the road. He calls me. He says, Frank, you like pineapple, okay? I didn't know, didn't know this guy until I sold him home last year. It's our first... I said, yeah, why do you ask? He said, well, my sister just sent me a whole case of pineapples from Hawaii. I can't eat them all. Come by and get one, Okay? That's the kind of relationship that you want to build with your clients so that they become friends. So I put past clients and customers in my friends and family category. Okay, two, prospects. And as we mentioned earlier, this is everyone who's indicated a real estate need in response to your prospecting and marketing efforts. Okay? So it's not the whole universe of thousands of people that you're reaching out to, but it's those who raise their hand in one way or another. They call you, they respond online to indicate a definite real estate need. Okay? And the reason I put them in my network is, this is the high touch group. The people in my network get a lot of attention, and I'm going to break that down for you. Okay? That's why I put them there. And then my referral partners. By the way, is there anybody uh, who's non-local or local that has already committed to sending you business if they know somebody doing business in your market area? Do you have anybody like that? Yep, yep, yep. How do you cultivate that relationship? How do you stay in touch? How do you remind them six months from now or a year from now you're still in the business and appreciate their referrals? Oh, that's a good way to do it, right? Reciprocal. Uh, that's fantastic. And by the way, I would encourage, this is, this is kind of outside, outside the scope of this class, but I would go to your local vendors that you're regulars at, restaurant, coffee shop, laundromat, gas station, wherever it is, hairstylist, and say, hey, I'm in here all the time. Um, I, I would love to... Um, to see if I can't help some of your clients with real estate needs, would you mind if I just put a little business card box here on the counter? Okay? And what I, real, if you really want to take this to the next level, you can order these little 5 by 7 acrylic stands. So it's not a big thing, it's, but it's a 5 by 7 it's a half sheet with a business card holder, and you can then put in like a color copy insert uh, of your value proposition or something, or it could be... Um, what business did you mention? Did you mention a business? Okay, let's say, let's say dry cleaners, okay? Oh, a stylist. A stylist, hair stylist. Okay, so, so it, it could be, if they'll let you do this, 
that this is sharper images or, 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 or sheer expressions preferred realtor mark. And then you have your business cards right there. So tie in the name of the business and you become the preferred realtor with the places that you're doing business with. Okay? I stay in touch with my referral partners by putting them in my network. I consider them part of my network and they get the full treatment that my friends and family and prospects get. Okay? I'll, and I'll explain what that is. The full treatment. Here it goes. Here's how it starts. I mail something to them every month. Okay. And I've actually shifted out of my geo farming and demo farming strategies to mailing to these people. This was part of, part of what came out of my mastermind retreat with these top agents from around the state. This is what they're doing. They're investing their dollars in their network as opposed to people who don't know them. Okay? And I would encourage you to send a personal introduction brochure the first month you add a person to your network. Okay? So if you've never done this before, you want to create a personal brochure. Design Center's got some options for that. You know, I had one done recently. In fact, I'm going to show you a, a picture of it. I went on to Fiverr.com. Have you all used that service? F-I-V-R-R, -R, I think. Dot com. I'll, you know what? I'm just gonna. This is so important. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up for you real quick. You're gonna love this. F I. There it is. F I V R R dot com. That's it. What that is is a is a third party service that connects you with all types of extremely talented people from around the world who will do jobs for you for five dollars. So I literally paid somebody. I don't even know where Nikki lives. You know, it's probably India or Pakistan or Philippines. Uh, I paid her five dollars and she designed a double-sided color 11 by 17 brochure for me. All I did was send her the raw data. Okay, let's see if we can get this back open. Well, I don't know what I'm into now. This is a new, um, this is a new, there we go, a new feature which I haven't even explored yet. Okay, so I'll show that to you, but you can have one designed for you that, pr unless you have design tendencies, is a lot nicer than you can do. I had my, I had it back in three days. Okay, it was pretty slick. So I'm going to recommend you send out something first that's an extensive, Oh my good, I'm getting the whole picture and you guys aren't. I'm going to close this and reopen, if you'll forgive me, because I'm not sure why it's doing that or giving you all that image. Okay, this is. This is what the old projector used to do. <laughs> that local restaurant was in New Jersey. My son lives in New Jersey, so we wrote. <laughs> visiting them last, uh, last Thanksgiving. Okay, so send a personal introduction brochure. Um, this is very important, even to people who know you, like you, trust you, because it's going to demonstrate competency on your part. Oh, well I knew Mark was a real estate agent, but oh my goodness, I didn't know he was this kind of agent. I didn't know he had his act together like this. Okay, so it raises your competency perception. And then as you're blowing and going, Every time you add somebody new, maybe somebody that you meet at the hairstylist or somebody at the rotary, you want to send them their, that per same personal brochure the first month, the first month, and then put them on the ongoing, which is in my, what I'm going to recommend is a testimonial postcard. Okay? 
There's a thousand things you can send, and the important thing is that you send something. You know, we say in other contexts, there's the context, there's no magic words, only magic acts. In our expired class, we said that. It's not so much getting the script right when you call. The big deal is making the call. <laughs> it's the same thing here. It's not so much what you send, it's that you send. And stay in touch that way. But I do want to give you some, some actual um, examples. So let me, um, let me pull up an example of what I had my, my fiber project. Let me show you what that looks like. So if you're just starting out, for example, I'm doing 100 postcards that just say that I'm in a new, I'm now associated with Remax Associates on the page. Yes. Okay, you're sending that to who? Anyone that I know, first name basis. So I, 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 I think that's great. I, I think that's a, it's a fantastic, perfect start, okay? But this, if you want, when you, when you want to go beyond that, here, um, and I'm having that same issue here. Let's see if it's going to pick it up. There we go. So here's, here's a little bit more extensive. So once you get some, some transactions under your belt, you can feature some what's typically called testimonials. I call them reviews you know, from people telling about how wonderful you are. You can put a little bit of your credentials up here, your education, professional background, that type thing. And then I, I recommend a, a fairly extensive personal introduction that, that ends with the explanation for why you're doing what you're doing right now. Why are you a full-time real estate sales professional? And that should tie into your values of helping people. That should be the message that this story tells, okay? So that's, that by the way, is, is the uh, inside of this brochure that I had created for $5. And let me get it off. They sent it to me as a um, PDF, and then I paid an extra $15 uh, to get a JPEG version. Uh, 